and we'll kick and we'll get going here. So thanks again, everybody, so much for joining in. Um, we're on the final day of the Nebraska Emergency Response Program. So for those that have joined us for all of our um, webinars this week, thank you so much um, for those that we've chatted with one on one. You know, I hope you found it fruitful and helpful. Um, and, and just know that as we go forward, um, you know, we don't close the door. So if you need anything, um, you know, feel free to come right back to us. Um, with that being said, um, let's let, let's get into today's topic. So we're going to be talking about resources and strategies for nonprofits. And again, you know, I just want to do a final thank you as well to N Motion and the Lincoln Partnership for Economic Development for all their help this week. You know, helping secure just such fantastic speakers helping get the word out and just helping with all the programming. Um, they've been really, really, really helpful um, and, and really, and so really thank you. Um, again, for those familiar with it, um, if you're having Wi-Fi issues today, um, here's a phone number you can call in. Um, you just have to type in that phone number, type, it'll ask you for an ID, type in that ID there, um, and it'll enter you right into the um, meeting that we're in. You won't be able to see the screens, um, but don't fret. Um, we'll have the presentations later and be able to share them with people that um, are unable to um, view it. Um, so if you had questions for during today's webinar, um, at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a Q&A box. Um, just type in your question and shoot it to us. Um, we have you know, a few panelists here and we can, we'll be saving the majority of the questions for the end of the program um, today, or end of the webinar today, I should say. Um, but you know we'll be able to answer them as we go if there are certain things like links and stuff like that so any questions at all please don't hesitate to reach out um if there are any unanswered questions um they'll be sent to us afterwards um please just don't send your questions in anonymously so we can uh return that answer to you um to our best of our ability and if anything else just it comes up you know and or if none of this makes sense to you just feel free to shoot me an email um i'm really easy to find i'm danny at generator.com um and, and happy to you know point you in the right direction so um, kind of going on with the tech, um, if just due to the number of people we have today and due to everything, um, we unfortunately won't be able to solve any tech issues that we're having. Um, but like I said, you know, fret not, um, all of this is going to be recorded and up on our um, generator resources page um, within a day or two um, and on Vimeo and YouTube for y'all. So without further ado, and I'm sorry, Hannah, that this is kind of a blurry photo when I grabbed it. I was like, uh-oh. Um, but we have, we have um, some awesome speakers today. Um, and I'm, it's my pleasure to introduce you to Hannah Young, who is the Pol Public Policy and Major Events Manager for the Nonprofit Association of the Midlands. So without further ado, I'm going to stop share. And Hannah, I am going to make you the presenter. And I'll let you know when we can see your screen. Perfect. Why'd you take it away? Right. Okay. On. There you go. Take it away. Perfect. Okay. Like I said, I'm Hannah Young. We also have um, our CEO, Ann Hendry, on as a panelist and our program director, Rosie Higgs. So if there's anything I don't touch in here that you have questions on, I'm sure one of us could do our best to try to answer that. So I thank you very much for having me, Danny. We really, really appreciate this opportunity and being able to get the word out on what resources are available for nonprofits. Okay. So this will majorly be focusing on the COVID-19 federal legislation and what it means for nonprofits. First, my name, like I said, is Hannah Young and I am the Public Policy Manager at Nonprofit Association of the Midlands, or NAM. We are a membership organization serving nonprofits of all sizes and missions throughout Nebraska and Southwest Iowa. We currently have over 650 nonprofit organizations as members, and NAM is here to serve our organization members and the people that they serve. Some of our key programs include guidelines and principles for nonprofit organizations, salary and benefit survey conducted each year, and Google groups and list blurbs for HR professionals, CEOs, and public policy. And we have much, much more. More information can be found at nonprofitam.org. Okay. NAM has a public policy committee that helps create and inform their public policy agenda. The board then approves the agenda each fall. If you'd like to view the agenda, please visit our website under advocacy. If you're interested in taking action and staying up to date on nonprofit issues at the state and on the federal level, please sign up on our website as well. It's important now more than ever. 
And I will put a plug in here because it's my job to um, not forget to take the census. Um, it's here, it's every 10 years, and we know that it, how important it is for nonprofits to have correct data and resources that come in. So please, please, please make sure everyone here has taken your census and make sure to promote it. If you would like any information on that, um, Nan is the chair, or I am the chair of the Nebraska Counts, which is a coalition of nonprofits to help work out, to get out the count in 2020. So that website is, not, is nebraskacounts.org. So please visit that if you have any questions on the census. If you have any other questions regarding any of this policy information, policy in general, please feel free to email me at hannah at nonprofitam.org. Okay. We'd like to give a huge shout out to the National Council of Nonprofits. They represent nonprofits across the country and have helped us by being the experts in the field. We firmly believe without them, nonprofits would not have been included in the federal COVID legislation. So thank you to all of them. If you would like more resources on their COVID responses, please visit the National Council link on the screen. Just a quick disclaimer, this is the best of my understanding as of right now on April 10th. Um, it's changing constantly. I did a webinar yesterday and by the time it ended, something pretty major had changed. So I had to go back and talk about how it was changed. So just please know that um, these are, there are also very, very few federal and state rules or regulations right now. So a lot of this is our best guess. There's no um, firm guidelines. So again, just please realize that this is not legal or financial advice, I'm not a lawyer. Okay, let's get into it. So first major bill that was passed was the Families First Coronavirus Response Act or FFCRA. The big components to this were paid sick and family leave and the refundable payroll tax credit. For the paid leave requirements, it must be an employer fewer than 500. It's effective April 1st, 2020 and expires on December 31st, 2020. This includes two weeks of emergency paid sick leave due to either an employee or a family. For the employee leave, you can, it includes an employee that can't work or telework due to quarantine or an isolation order, advice to self-quarantine, or experiencing symptoms of COVID-19. They would receive regular pay up to $511 per day and up to $5,110 over the entire paid sick period. So they receive full pay up to those amounts. For the family who can't work or telework due to caring for a quarantine individual, care, caring for a child due to school care closures, or child care provider is unavailable. This includes two-thirds pay up to $200 per day and $2,000 over the whole pay sick leave period. The refundable payroll tax credit applies to the employer share of payroll taxes, leave costs exceeding Payroll taxes will be refunded to the employer at the end of each quarter. For more information on this, please visit the IRS FAQ page because there's now included a new IRS form um, 7200. Okay, and now we move on to the CARES Act, which is kind of the bulk of what I'll be talking about today. The Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act, or CARES Act. For the loans involved, I'm the first state that these loans apply to 501c3 nonprofits only, with a few exceptions for a certain type of veterans nonprofit and tribal. So these do not unfortunately apply to most C4s or C6s, which um, we know some of our members are. The Paytech Protection Program is for those small businesses, including nonprofits, with at least one paid staff up to 500 paid staff. The loan amount is that of 2.5 times the monthly payroll up to $10 million. This loan can be used for payroll, benefits, rent and mortgage, and debt, and is available through June 30th. This loan can be forgiven if the employer maintains employment for the eight weeks after the origination of the loan or rehire, rehires employees by June 30th. 
These loans are available now and should be processed through your local bank. We do know that there are some issues coming around banks not knowing that nonprofits are eligible for these or the time. Um, we have found, at least on, for our members, smaller banks are having a little bit easier time processing these. So let me know if you have any questions regarding that. The second type are the idle loans, which are emergency injury disaster loans, but are now included in nonprofits. So there's two types. The original EIDL loans are now just expanded to include nonprofits. This loan is $1,000 per employee up to $10,000 and it's available until December 31st. It is based on credit score but is not forgiven. This loan is processed through the SBA. The emergency EIDL program is $10,000 advance that comes within three days. Up to $10,000 may be treated as a grant if you are not qualified for the larger EIDL loan and get denied, or you can roll it into your Paycheck Protection Program loan. The mid-sized business loan program is still very vague and does not have too much clarification. It is meant to help those nonprofits and businesses that have more than 500 employees, but less than 10,000 employees. The loan amounts are unclear. We did get some more information yesterday, so I'm going to read exactly what that says from yesterday because this just came down last night. The Treasury Department announced the initial details about its progress in implementing the portion of the Section 4003 of the CARES Act calling on the Secretary to endeavor to create a loan program for nonprofits employees, employers, sorry, with between 500 and 10,000 um, employees. Treasury said that it's setting up a Main Street business lending program that will apply to employees with up to 10,000 employees or annual revenues of less than 1 point, or sorry, excuse me, 2.5 billion. Notably, the department is removing the 500 employee floor or smaller organizations can also apply is setting up two programs, the Main Street New Loan Facility and the Main Street Expanded Loan Facility. The Federal Reserve would oversee loans of at least $1 million and a maximum of $1.5 million or $150 million expanded. Loans would have a four-year maturity and would not be forgivable. So this is still definitely in the process, and that's the information I have so far on that one. Okay. Now, after the loans are over, I think these, what I'm going to go through the next couple slides, are definitely um, kind of the lesser known, but super, super important to nonprofits. So first is the charitable giving incentives. It is now all taxpayers are eligible to give above the line, or some call it non-itemized or universal deduction, meaning that you can give $300 to a nonprofit that you claim that you can claim on top of your normal standard deduction. So we are really encouraging those who can give to give. We know that nonprofits are a vital part of our community and they really need the extra funds right now more than ever. So getting the word out about this part of the CARES Act is really important because besides our um, people in our circle, we haven't really been hearing people talking about it and that's a really big incentive for people to give. For the 8% of individuals who do itemize, the bill would suspend the normal limit on deductions for contributions. So that's usually 50% of adjusted gross income or 60% for cash contributions. For corporations, the limit on deductions for contributions is ordinarily 10% of adjusted gross income and has been elevated to 25% for 2020. Food donations go from 15% to 25% as well. And I should say this is all for the tax year 2020. Refundable payroll tax credit up to $5,000 per employee per quarter for these, um, the employees retained tax credit, sorry. Uh, conditions are that it be ongoing concern at the beginning of 2020, experience a whole or partial shutdown, and sell a drop in revenue of at least 50% in the first quarter compared to the first quarter of 2019. Entities' whole operation must be taken into account when determining eligibility, and employers receiving the Paytech Protection Program loans are not eligible for these credits. So I think most people are advising to, if you can, go with the Paytech Protection Program loan because it works out better for you in the long run. 
Okay, um, more of the CARES Act, unemployment insurance. So for individual, it waives the waiting period and extends it for 13 weeks, plus an additional $600 per week, more than a state benefit for four months. This does include uninsured church employees, employers, sorry. For, employee, um, for employers of, who are self-insured nonprofits, they are only getting up to 50% covered, so not the full 100% covered. This is something that I'm really excited about. The federal student loans are automatically in forbearance until September 30th with 0% interest rate. The best part of this is that if you are currently in or you um, apply for the public student loan forgiveness program, then these months do count towards your payments. So you are now essentially paying 114 payments instead of 120. So for those who don't know about the public student loan forgiveness, if you work at a eligible 501c3 or a government entity, then you can get your student loans forgiven after 10 years. So this takes six months of those payments off. So um, I'm currently in the program and so I will not be paying this and then it will go towards, still go towards my my full amount so i'm really excited about that um we stopped the uh, federal loans have stopped uh wage garnishments and debt collections for at least 60 days starting on march 13th and we expect that will be delayed or extended sorry we have delayed income tax filings for individuals and as of yesterday we learned that we will be they will be delaying them for nonprofits as well Again, I'm going to read what came out yesterday because it's just so new. The, IR, the IRS announced yesterday it is extending it to July 15th relief to all taxpayers that have a filing or payment deadline falling on or after April 1st, 2020 and before July 15th, 2020. The announcement identifies the Form 990-T return for unrelated business income taxes and Form 990-PF excise tax payments and return the Form 990-W estimated UBIT form, among others. Although the news release and notice didn't say expressly the annual Form 990 fi filing deadline is also delayed, but by operation, this notice is a pre-pandemic decision. And then I'm going to give a shout out to the census once again. The census deadline has been extended to August 14, 2020, so about a, another month out. You can still take your census online and via telephone. However, the Census Bureau is not currently um, out door knocking for obvious reasons, so you cannot take it um, via the numerator coming to your door, you will also start to get paper forms in the mail. So those can um, those can still be filled out, but you will no numerators will come to the door until at least April 15th. But I assume that will be pretty heavily extended. OK, um, the last kind of thing I have is we really, really need advocacy going on right now. We are so glad that nonprofits were included in a lot of this CARE Act, but we still need more and we're still the backbone of what's really going on right now and helping people. So we are asking for four kind of advocacy measures from people or from organizations. Expanding nonprofits access to credit to provide immediate financial relief by expanding nonprofit eligibility for the Paycheck Protection Program and by establishing a dedicated funding stream for paycheck protection loans to nonprofit organizations. So expanding that made to not just 501c3s but the other two organizations. Strengthening temporary above the line charitable deductions from the CARES Act by allowing taxpayers to use it on 2019 taxes and significantly increasing the $300 cap and extending it beyond 2020. We really want people to be able to give and give more and get that standard deduction on or their uh, charitable incentive on top of their standard deduction. Holding harmless self-insured nonprofits by providing funding to cover 100% of the cost to these organizations' unemployment claims. Without this change, many nonprofits that provide healthcare, food assistance, affordable housing, childcare, and other critical services will have to end or curtail services later this year. And last, increase the emergency funding so that nonprofits can work with state and local governments to provide essential services to vulnerable families and frontline responders during the COVID-19 crisis. We highly encourage you to reach out to your elected senators and congressmen to help make additional changes moving forward. 
And that is all I have for the bulk of the presentation. But I, like I said, there are three of us on here who can answer, I think, most of the questions people have. Let me give a second to see if any start rolling in. Sounds good. So I guess I guess one you know one big thing that and this might be a great question for y'all. And so one big you know theme that um, and I can just kind of kick it off to get the juices flowing. Um, but one big thing that we've seen you know on the generator side of things is you know it's just you know there is like you said a lot going on right now and it's constantly changing. Um, you know and for those that you know maybe feeling overwhelmed, maybe feeling a little anxious about this. You know if you had to you know, take those first steps you know, after this phone call, um, you know, what would you recommend, you know, being those first, you know, st step one, two, three in, you know, taking care of all this? Yeah, absolutely. I would, I mean, my personal opinion would be to see if you qualify for any of these loan programs, especially the Paycheck Protection Program, because it, it, it doesn't turn into a grant. So you wouldn't have to pay that back if you meet the requirements. So to me, that of a no-brainer, but also talking to your bank or your local institutions and figuring out what's the best loan or option for you, because I can't make that decision for everyone, obviously, and so I think just it's really important to make sure you're doing what's right for you and not what you might have heard someone else doing, because everyone's circumstances are so different, and these bills and laws are so kind of finicky that it just makes sure it's like what you should be doing for you, not because you heard someone else do it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, I have a question. Um, so, you know, a lot of nonprofits are um, currently overwhelmed with like trying to help support their local communities. And a lot of them are uh, having trouble, you know, get necessary resources and volunteers to support their communities. Do you have any advice on how to combat that or what to do if they are seeing a need for increasing their capacity to handle this crisis? Yeah, Rosie or Anne, do you have any? Okay, Rosie. Yeah, so um, I really hope that nonprofits are relying on their boards of directors right now. This is really, crises like this is really the time for your board of directors to shine. Uh, they are your connection to your community. They should be connections to resources. And they really have more, than, a lot of times, much more than the folks that are on the ground in, doing the work. Um, they really have that 30,000 foot view of the community um, and, and connections that you might not have as a staff member. So really, I would recommend that everybody calls on their board at this time uh, to gather to kind of help the organization work through this crisis. Because that's really, um, at the core, that's what they're there for, um, to help lead the organization in uncertain times. I also um, would leverage any relationships you have in the community, uh, late relationships you have with your bank, relationships that you have with uh, your primary funders and your donor community. Um, Hannah talked a little bit about the tax credits um, that um, that folks are going to be able the going to be able to uh, apply. I'm sorry. Uh, that are going to qualify for so people can donate money and then claim it on their taxes next year so this is the time for them to do that and folks are strapped but um, there's a lot of people who have been able to just move their jobs as they are home so I'm um, really calling on those folks to support their favorite nonprofits and right now is when everybody is uh, really talking a lot about supporting their local business community getting carry out from their favorite small restaurants things like that locally owned business and uh, working with locally owned businesses with curbside pickup and all those kinds of things, using your social media channels and, um, and those kinds of things to get the word out that your favorite nonprofits are also local small businesses and also should be thought of when you're looking for um, places to support during this time. This is Ann. I'll just join in. Um, regarding to the volunteer aspect, check with the nonprofit before you decide if they may not be able to take volunteers. Some still can. I was just on an earlier Zoom call, and once the things we don't think about, once the uh, suggestion that everybody wear masks goes into effect, our local food bank had to cut the number of volunteers um, that they were using compared to a couple of weeks ago. So that's one thing to think about. I know this audience today is larger than just Nebraska, so I would definitely, you know, Hannah mentioned the National Council of Nonprofits. 
go to their website. They have a map for the United States. You can click on your state and find out NAM's counterpart in that area. They can be a great resource. And then finally, to piggyback what Rosie was saying, um, it, if it's possible for you, the best thing you can do for nonprofits is to give money. Um, that's really what everybody needs right now. Cash flow is an issue, especially for those nonprofits that I think of as first responders, food pantries, homeless shelters, after school programs, those types of things. I definitely say just pushing the above the line tax incentive because most people don't think that they can ever claim anything they get unless they're giving a ton. And so this is just really a great opportunity for those to give up to, I mean, you can get well over 300, but $300 will be, um, you can claim on your taxes. So if that's something that hasn't been able to happen before, and we're really going to push to keep that because what it, we think it should always be on there, but um, just kind of a way to leverage some of that. If anyone has any final questions here, feel free to type them in. There's usually a little delay, so I'll give them another couple 30 seconds here or so. Cool. It looks like it looks like no one has that many questions, um, which, which is a okay, you know. And we will definitely be, you know, sharing this and you know being able to um, answer any questions if anyone has any, um, you know, post post uh, webinar here. Um, but again, you know, I really want to thank Hannah. Um, I want to thank Rosie and Anne as well um, for giving such a great presentation today uh, um, and being able to you know, allowing us to share this with the rest of our programs as well. Um, I will take back over the screen here Let's see if i can do this actually danny the, the question yeah. pop up. right on all right so nonprofits eligible for ppp and eidl at mid mid-size main street i can type this live so then you can see it read it as well hannah in the q a the question is nonprofits are nonprofits eligible uh, I believe so. Nonprofit verbatim, it's nonprofits eligible for PPP and EIDL and mid sized Main Street. Yep, nonprofits were expressly um, invited to apply for all of these. So they um, are eligible for all three. And um, yeah, so EIDL loans typically had not been available for nonprofits. So that's why the SBA is having a little kind of a little bit of problems with understanding nonprofits and how they but you absolutely can and just please be persistent and um, let us know if you have any questions or anything crazy comes up but you yep absolutely and you know and just, this this just might be out of my own pure ignorance um, but but when you're when nonprofits are filling out you know the PPP the EIDL and every all the forms are there any you know additional forms that they are going to need um, on top of you know the regular for-profit businesses um, and do you know yeah, yes, um, and it's interesting. The forms keep changing. Uh, last Thursday, I filled out the PPP form thinking I was ahead of the game, and by Friday morning, SBA had changed the form um, and then submitted it, and then there's lots of – all businesses have to send in payroll information. What I actually got a follow-up from our bank yesterday on the PPP loan, we had to send them a copy of our IRS designation letter that had our employee identification number on it. We had to send um, our articles of incorporation – um, so those are two documents that I don't think for-profit would, would have to do. Awesome. Just clarification that PPP loans are through your local bank and the EIDL loans are through the SBA. And the, main, the mainstream ones I also believe will be through local banks, but I do not think it's been um, finalized yet. Awesome. Well, awesome. Well, th hey, thank you all so much. I will do this really quick, see if this works. And, but no, thank you again um, to, you know, our speakers here from the Nonprofit Association for the Midlands. Um, and, and thank you again for our sponsors. And, and thank you to all the participants here that we had today um, and for the past week. You know, it's it, it really, really appreciative of everyone joining in and doing your part here. So thank you so much. Um, we do have one more webinar later this afternoon um, on how to um, use this economic downturn to sharpen your sword to come out stronger. So feel free to share that with your network. Um, additionally, 
this presentation um, will be available on the generator resources page um, for you to refer back to and, and please share this with your network um, for those that weren't able to make it today whether they're taking care of their kids or, or just really busy um, so please share this with your network um, but again thank you so much my email is danny at generator.com if you'd like to reach out and get in touch with any of them as well um, but thank you so much y'all have a great day